Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. And it is a drizzly January day here, but my spirits have been lifted already because I'm hanging out with a great guy that I'm excited for you guys to get to know on the um, listening ship, Mr. Tim Dunn with Advocate Integrated Medicine. Tim, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Great to be here, folks. Yeah, I'm excited to learn about your business and um, kind of what you do. So, but John City Living Podcast, I ask the first question most of the time is what do you love most about Johnson City? That's a multifaceted answer. Well, we got some time. <laughs> uh, the climate, the culture, the people, the kindness, uh, the warmth that you have when you're here, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. And those are kind of tip, pretty much your typical answers. Um, I haven't heard kindness, I think. I hear people, which we're all very kind here, I feel like. For the most part. Yes, we are. I'm from Michigan. Okay. And we've got a little bit of an edge, not as much as Jersey or New York. <laughs> but you can definitely tell driving north on 75 once you cross over the Ohio River. Uh, the kindness is tampered a bit. <laughs> and so you're like, I'm looking forward to getting back across the river back to Tennessee. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. How long have you been in? 12 years. Tennessee? Okay, so are you sort of um, warming up to the, like, the area and being kind to everyone? Most definitely. Went to school down in Atlanta for five years. Okay. So that's where I was introduced to more of the Southern culture. Yeah, for sure. Embraced it. Well, good, 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 good. Okay. So tell the listeners and myself about Advocate Integrated Medicine. We are a multidiscipline healthcare facility that focuses on arthritic and degenerative joints. Oh, wow. Okay. And 22 how, second elevator. That was like a three second. Um, how did you, okay, let's go back to the start. So you grew up in Michigan. And then did you go to school for this there? Tell me about your like schooling background. Yes. And how you got uh, into this. I've got 14 years of college. I got my doctorate as a chiropractor down in Atlanta. Nice. And then I did a residency in PM&R, which is physical medicine rehab. Okay. And one in sports. Okay. And then so from there, you just went to work and started this deal? Probably not. For me, it's all a it's it's always been about the, the patient. That's mm -hmm. why the name advocate. I'm yeah. a patient advocate. I don't work for the insurance companies. I don't work for big groups. I don't work for big pharma. I work for the people that walk through my door, yeah. and I'm their advocate. So it's my job to get as much information, uh, facts as I can, mm -hmm. and then put together a plan that best fits them. Gotcha. Okay. And is it? Um, do you also offer chiropractic? Chiropractic is one of our services. We've got a uh, family nurse practitioner that's in there. Okay. She handles a lot of primary care. Okay. Um, and also the physical medicine needs that yeah. we have. So where, where are you located? We're on uh, 215 East Watauga. Okay. Which is about a baseball throw from here. Yeah. If, you, if you're a Braves out. fan. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a Braves fan. <laughs> if you can throw a baseball mile. Um, yeah. Okay. And so... Tell me about the dream of your owning your own business. How did that get started? How did you decide, like, I'd like to become a chiropractor? Interesting. And I'd like to, you know, help people. How did that come about? When I was a young man, I got into bodybuilding mm -hmm. and um, enjoyed that quite a bit. Always been an entrepreneur at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, I got injured in the gym, and they wanted to operate on my low back and fuse three levels. And at 20 years old, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, so my father, who was military, which means you do what you're told, he told me that I needed to go to this chiropractor, and I was grumbling my way in there. And uh, I walked in there, and he was a very slight build man, and um, he he showed me what chiropractic was. In chiropractic, folks, you have 11 systems in your body. One controls the other 10, mm. and that one is your brain, your central nervous mm -hmm. system. So the only thing my job is is to open the lines of communication between your brain and your tissues. Mm. And we understand that when you lose that communication at 100%, that's called paralysis. So chiropractic is not a belief system. It's basic anatomy, something we learn our sophomore level in college. Yeah, And it's when the brain doesn't communicate with the tissues, the tissues stop working, whether it's numbness, tingling, muscle control, or organ control. So chiropractic really is a fundamental basis. 
So I went to this chiropractor and got adjusted, and I was the biggest skeptic. I'm not doing all the things that you asked me to. But as time went on, not only did my back feel better and I started to heal up, but things like sinusitis cleared out. My ears, I, I, I didn't have ear issues a- anymore. So then I sent my wife uh, and with her issues. And, and this was like an ongoing uh, clinical analysis to see, all right, can you help with this? Can you help with that? I sent my parents and her parents and siblings and anyone that I could find just to understand what this thing called chiropractic was. It was uh, in the negative light in the medical community, which is where my mom worked. So I wanted to understand it for myself by actions, not by words. And uh, that's one of the things that I tell my patients is that your actions speak so loud I can't hear what you say. Ooh. So I'm, I'm a truth guy. I'm, I'm a proof guy. Show me. Right. Don't just tell me because if you Michigan, tell me. Not the show me state. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Missouri, is that right? Different state. Right. Different state. Right. But you, yeah. Fair. So the real turning point for me was uh, I was 22 years old. My oldest daughter was two. They wanted to put tubes in her ears and take her tonsils out. And I knew enough at that point that I needed to restore normal, that a symptom was simply your body's way of telling you it wasn't working correctly. So I walked in there with my two-year-old daughter, and I said, can you take care of her? He said, by all means. Started getting her work done, and within a few short days, her issues were resolved. And that, that made me pause. That made me pump the brakes because a two-year-old doesn't have the ability uh, to discuss what they're feeling and, and why. Right. So that really started. The, the, like the love of it or the uh, interest in it. And then the interest, the interest. I'm not some, someone that can really be sold. Yeah. You know, you have to prove to me that things are what they are. Yeah. You know, like sun rises every morning, <laughs> sun sets every night. That's right. That's right. You know, I like it. So that, that's so you're how kind I got of like, oh, this is really interesting. And then. You said, this is something I'd like to look into for a career. Yes. Yeah, so one thing that I was fortunate enough to have the wherewithal when I was a young person is if there's something you have an interest in, find someone that does it for a living, such as yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in what you do, reach out to you, see if you can spend the day with you. Sure. And do the things that you do. And then say to yourself, could I see myself doing this for 40 years? Right. And that's what I did. That's cool. Yeah. And then so you just got online. No, probably not back then. Back you, then we didn't have online. You called around <laughs> with a rotary telephone or push button and you said, hey, um, I'd like to enroll in school. And you went to Atlanta for? Well, I had my undergrad in um, a business in finance. And uh, um, I thought I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. I spent two days with our local one that we had in town. Mm-hmm. Was very impressed by the gentleman extremely knowledgeable. I liked his ability to take something that was uh, in bad shape and reconstruct it to where it functioned well for him. And uh, I spent a couple of days with this chiropractor, just nonstop questions. Why did you do this? And what led you to believe that? And how did you go here? And Mm -hmm. what was your reasoning behind it? Yeah. And uh, I like the idea of owning my own, my own business. And I like the idea of helping people. Mm. You know, I don't think that we do enough of that in this world. And we do a lot more of it here in the South mm-hmm. of helping each each other. But um, that's something that really resonated with me. Why do you feel like it's um, more directed in the South that we do like to help each other? Uh, personal opinion is uh, the Bible. Yeah. We embrace the Bible. We embrace Christ and God more here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still struggle like everyone else with walking the walk that we need to walk. For sure. But... We've all accepted that that's the guide, yeah. whereas in the north, <clears throat> I'm not really sure that that's something that's embraced or accepted. Right, leading people's belief system. Yeah, I mean, we got to pray before this, and it was good to hear that you were all about that. And so, all about it. Yeah, I love Jesus too, and um, yeah, I just say, all right, I'm going to follow you today, and that's me loving you on this podcast and taking care of you and whoever's yes. listening. If they need to be need something, we're here to help however we can, and I think exactly that's how right. we. Surround people and just love them well. Um, okay, then, so you went to Atlanta and went to chiropractic school. Went to chiropractic school with my wife. 
with your wife. Does she do it too? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, she yeah. sure does. Did you have kids then or no? Yeah, we had one going in and three coming out. Oh, wow. And then how did you get from Atlanta to Johnson City? I went back home because I wanted to raise my kids around family. Okay. I felt that that was important. And while I was up in the uh, lower Michigan area, south of Detroit, um, I've always been a, a drawn to sports. Mm -hmm. I spent 20 years on the medical team with the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, cool. So I got to work with that group of individuals closely. Uh, and in my career, I worked in multidiscipline facilities because I think from a patient's perspective, what they want is everybody to communicate about their case. Mm -hmm. They want to know all the options for their care mm -hmm. and that they want to make the decision. And that's something that is a challenge to see in our current healthcare model. Sure. Meaning when you go to a, a provider, this is what you need to do. And if you say no or you pump the brakes, then that's looked on as, an, as a negative. Right. You in my to, world. Yeah, their choice is do it or don't, basically. Yes. And live with the pain or not, you know. It's or exactly right. Mind, we, we, we hope we can fix you. In my world, I like to present all the options. Sure. So not just the allopathic options, which mm -hmm. are your MDs, or osteopathic, which are your DOs. Mm -hmm. I want to give them every option that's available, things that I do know about, things I don't know about. The things I do know a lot about, we can move forward. If I don't, then there's other providers that I can get them in touch with. So it's a collaborative effort mm -hmm. when you come to our practice. Yeah. You see... Uh, the family nurse practitioner, you see me, we're in communication throughout the day. We stop each other in the hall. We meet in offices, constantly talking about your case. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful uh, medical director, Dr. Matt Riggins. He was in yesterday for three or four hours. He comes in and hangs out with us, and we, again, go over patient care. And So you're getting three or four different opinions mm -hmm. on your case. Right. Where else do you get that? Yeah. And where else do you get that, Colin, in that short a time? Right. Yeah, because if you go to like the Mayo, you may get that, but it's probably, you know, a week where you got to look yes. at, have five different specialists come look at you. Exactly. And are they communicating with each other? Right. No. At best, they're sending emails, but they're sending reports. Right. So my challenge with reports, if it's a radiological report or an MRI report, is that I'm getting someone else's opinion. So what I like to do is every morning when we go into the office, if we have reports, labs, mm -hmm. analysis to discuss, we pull them up on a great big TV in my office, and each one of us looks at it and we discuss the case openly Yeah, because that, one, makes the patients uh, more aware, mm -hmm. and two, it makes us to be better providers. Yeah. Again, I don't think that we have this type of model in healthcare. Yeah, it is... Um sounds very, like in my mind, the way it should be. <laughs> like It's like, you, you should have multiple options to choose from. A yes, lot you of, should. And, um, we're big, whole, you know, homeopathic. We like uh, alternative options. We like, uh, you know, um, chiropractic. We don't look to the medicine first thing or the surgery first thing. It's more. Those items, though, Colin, they have their place. For sure. Oh, my god. But gosh. it's not every time and every place. Right. Yeah. Right? Oh, I mean, yeah, we've got great surgeons around that. Definitely we do save lives and change people's lives for the better. For we sure, we have we have many of them as patients. Yeah. Love them, embrace them, um, but even they will tell you we don't want to be giving you medications for every you know cough, sneeze, or sniffle, no. because what it does is it compromises your immune system. That when you really need it, yeah, it's out to lunch, right? And that's not okay. No, I'm, I'm, I agree a hundred percent. Tell us about some of the typical cases you see and some like for our listeners who may be dealing with something right now that, you know, they're, they're being told one option is the best way, you know, what are some other things like you've got a torn rotator cuff, you've got um, maybe a rash. I mean, you know, just go through what maybe sure. some of the cases that you're dealing with on, on the regular. Yesterday had a 56 year old male uh, history of bilateral shoulder surgeries, three on one, uh, two on the other. Uh, working with the VA uh, to have another shoulder surgery coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we pre-surgical rehab. Mm -hmm. So we rehab this patient to get that shoulder stable and strong, flexible, <clears throat> so that when they do have the procedure, mm -hmm. um, 
that we're helping the surgeon. Yeah, and you're kind of ahead of the game. We are optimizing the work that that surgeon does. That's working as a patient advocate. That's putting the patient first. And I also like to lift up the other doctors, you know, help them whenever we have the ability to help them. Yeah. If we can get a patient healthy and functioning at a higher level, if we can um, see smoking to where the, the procedure has a better chance and better outcomes, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's cool. How are you, um, I guess, how is it seen in the medical community when you're, do you get to deal with these other doctors or you just kind of. We do. On, yeah. And are they like grateful for these advocate um, I think, measures or not? I think that we're small enough that uh, we're not, you know, state of Franklin healthcare. Right. We're not uh, uh, HMG. We don't have those facilities yet. Yeah. Uh, our facility is still small. Mm -hmm. State of the art. But, but still small. Right. So um, our name is getting out there, but we have a long way to go to catch up to the others. Sure, for sure. Um, yeah, and so you, you do a lot of the uh, manipulations for chiropractic, I'm assuming? Uh, chiropractic is primarily myself. Okay. Um, and then uh, I do a lot of the overseeing of the rehab. Yeah. So physical medicine is my lane. Okay. Uh, Dr. Matt spent 30 years um, as an ER doc primary okay. care. So I like having him around because that's a lane that's, that I'm not f as familiar with. Sure. And he needs to make those decisions, not me. Yeah. And he's the oversight for the nurse practitioner, um, which brings him into the office way weekly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to, uh, but Dr. Riggins likes to come in. He likes to have discussion. He likes to see people and patients and staff and yeah. keep things on the right page. Okay. So, um, I guess tell us about like all the things that you guys offer. Um, I know you've kind of hit it high level, but I tell, yeah. Um, for our listeners who are like, Oh, well, I'm dealing with this. I mean, you may be able to touch on something that would bring yes. them to see you, which would be. So our great. nurse practitioner is D mm -hmm. her name is Khan Weedy Carmu. Uh, she goes by D mm -hmm. a lifelong resident of Johnson city, her and her husband. Uh, she handles primary care. Okay. So her and Dr. Riggins handle that. So we have things like the 12 lead EKG and a lab set up and all those types of things. So all of your primary care needs. Um, on my side of the equation, I handle primarily physical medicine with uh, the help of the others. And we're looking at putting people's bodies back together. So if your joints bother you, your shoulders, knees, hips, arthritis, backs, headaches, Rotator cuffs, we're not saying that we're the place that fixes things, but if you need other services, we can get you to a point where we optimize all those services. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, what's your favorite thing about your job? Taking the patients that have lost hope, mm. have told that there's not nothing more that we can do. We also do some type of regenerative medicine mm -hmm. where we can take different products and inject them into joints to help rebuild the cartilage. <coughs> Excuse me. Rebuild the cartilage. Like some stem cell st stuff? and That type of things. Yeah. Uh, human cell products, which is what that is. PRP. Um, so we use those types of products. <clears throat> what I get a lot of are the patients that I've been to ortho. I'm not a surgical candidate. I've tried PT twice. I don't know what else to do. Wonderful. Wonderful. We're going to take a look at you. The hard part is when patients fail to realize that it took them decades to get in this position. Yeah. And it's going to take me longer than a few visits or a few weeks to get them stable. Right. Biggest challenge. Yeah, I bet. We use a lot of analogies. And when we send our teenagers to the to the dentist to get braces. We typically leave braces on 18 to 24 months mm -hmm. and we're going to, we're going to move the teeth eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And yet when I throw up the x-rays <clears throat> and they can see that we need to move a spine an inch and they wonder why they don't feel better after a month. Right. We have a lot of work to do <laughs> and it's going to take time. Gotcha. 
Um, what do you see as some of the things um, that are like coming down the pipeline? I think for me, it seems like healthcare and integrated medicine is becoming more and more popular um, or more and more well received in the medical community. I think people are looking at it as a, um, a better way to go. Um, what do you feel like the future of healthcare is in that regard? Interesting that you brought that up. <clears throat> Back in 97 through 04, Mm -hmm. I worked with a group of individuals out of Chicago, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, where we took chiropractors that were advanced trained like myself. We worked with over 22,000 cases over a seven-year period. And the goal was try to reduce health care. We used actuaries with our numbers, which means that we never saw our numbers. We were allowed to do anything that we felt. At that time, we had nine points of health that we looked at, such as VO2 max, cardiac rhythm, BMI, those types of numbers. And we made lifestyle changes, things that we did either on a regular basis, things that we did quarterly. And our goal was to change your lifestyle and to elevate your health. Mm -hmm. After seven years, when we turned the information into Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, what we found is that we were able to save 57% cost per year for seven years. And they were probably like, That was significant. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> so when I presented the information, at that time I was practicing in Michigan, I presented the information to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, to their medical director. What was interesting about that conversation is I went through and presented the data, and I stick to data, I stick to facts, I don't stick to feelings, I don't stick to beliefs. And when I presented the data, the medical director said, well, Dr. Dunn, thank you for your efforts, but we find that everything that you offer these patients, we currently offer our patients, and we only find them to be 11%, not 57% total healthcare cost. And I said, gentlemen, I can understand your perspective, so let me attempt to clarify. When I was in chiropractic school, I owned a valet company, parking cars. I wasn't making enough money hourly, so I started a company and got a couple of lots and and provided for my family that that way. Nice. I said, here's the difference. One of my favorite cars is is a Ferrari because it's handmade. Every piece on this car is handmade. You're saying you have a Ferrari, and I'm saying I have a Ferrari, but let me outline the difference in the two. Your Ferrari is in pieces spread across a gymnasium floor. Mm -hmm. You don't drive it, you don't test it, and you don't incentivize it. And without those three things, you cannot achieve. But what I hope you take away from this meeting is that when you do test and incentivize, that you can achieve these numbers, and that's what the focus of this study needs to be. Mm -hmm. And an hour later, the study was pulled, and I haven't heard from him since. (laughs) Yeah, and you feel like um, on some level, I'm sure that was scary to them. Um, And then the money, you know, because of the physician model, you know, you got to treat people, and you've got different, um, I guess, specialties that are going to be coming in, and so they're all getting paid. And so, you know, although if you're talking to Blue Cross Blue Shield, you'd think they'd want to drop the total cost. So this goes back to around the mid-1860s. I mean, right? <clears throat> this goes back to mid-1860s. Louis Pasteur came out with uh, what he called the germ theory. The germ theory states that if this object I'm holding, if it is in fact a germ and I pass it to you, that you'll become sick with the germ. Ah. And our current healthcare system is based on the germ theory. Right. There's another gentleman across town. His name was Antoine Beauchamp. And he developed what he called the terrain theory. And the terrain theory stated that if your body is functioning at a high level, meaning if your immune system is able to operate and function, if you've given it everything that it needs to function, meaning a lack of nerve interference, supplements, vitamins, minerals, water, sleep, if your immune system is functioning at a high level, it doesn't matter what you come in contact with. So... Along in in the end of the 1800s, you had two more gentlemen come along, and that was uh, Nelson, or I'm sorry, David Rockefeller, excuse me, and um, um, Carnegie. Carnegie. 
So Rockefeller and Carnegie came along with what they called the um, Flexner Report of 1910, and it organized healthcare. Did it need to be organized? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what they did is they already knew the outcome before they did the report. So what they said is that we're going to embrace the germ theory and we're going to debunk the train theory. So anyone that opposes the germ theory, we're going to try and smash them. Because we want to sell pharmaceuticals. Yes. And the germ theory then developed through the Flexner Report into a pharmaceutical followed by surgical procedures. Interesting enough, who were the two gentlemen that own early pharmaceutical companies? Rockefeller and Carnegie. And they also funded a lot of med schools to teach all this, right? $640 million into 32 institutions. You must have done your homework on this stuff. Interesting. <clears throat> Very few people know some of, some of these stats. I applaud you. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, it started a long time ago, right? And, and yes. so you've been programming the physicians and uh, pharmacists now as well to these are the ways that we do this, right? And so how do you see the tide to change? I mean, that's like a huge machine, right? And so how do we, is there any, I oh, guess, gosh. is there any hope, Tim, like that we can you know, um, get back to more holistic? I've, I've, had, I've had some uh, sleepless nights. Yeah. You know, um, this even goes further, you know, World War I, you know, we had mustard gas. And what the physicians did is after they released the mustard gas, which is a biological weapon, then the soldiers that died, they took their bodies and performed autopsies. And what most people don't realize is after World War I, we had a stockpile of mustard gas. Well, Rockefeller couldn't let that product just set. So what he came up with was chemotherapy. And that's, that's the origins of chemotherapy was mustard gas of World War I. Holy smokes. In other words, you take a patient to the brink of death, mm -hmm. which kills the, um, the culprit, right. and then you bring them back. Right. Um, and this is, and, and this even goes further, you know, um, in 1967, ah, osteopaths were separate, much like chiropractors are, but there's 2000 of them in the state of California that wanted to be included mm -hmm. inclusion. So they had agreed to take another year of courses and then switch over their osteopathic degree into medical degrees that then became osteopaths are part of the allopathic model. Gotcha. They have one or two classes in holistic type stuff, and less than 3% of osteopaths practice the way that I do. Hmm. But, you know, in essence, you're giving up your who you are, your identity, to become part of the system. Right. So your question is, do, do, do I see a hope? Sad, because, I mean, we typically look for DOs, if we, you know, if we can, because we feel like they're For something more, different. Yeah. Yes, yes. And now that is... That is um, that is sliding into family nurse practitioners. We're trying to find FNPs that have more of a of a hol holistic approach. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to change. I honestly thought that the work that we did in the late '90s was going to. I thought that that had enough uh, basis to it, enough data that we could then, Colin, go to um, an individual that owns a corporation that are self funded. Mm -hmm. So if you have more than 500 employees, typically those corporations are self-funded with their health care. Right. And they have stop gaps and umbrellas. They'll pay up to a certain point, and then there's an umbrella policy to cover everything they yeah. afford. I was really hoping and praying that that data would then move into those people's hands, and the light bulb would go off and say, wait a minute, we can have healthier people, we can have less workers' comp injuries, they can be more productive, mm -hmm. And we can save a ton of money. Yeah. Okay, tell me where the, the negative is How do we get here. going? Right. Right. Uh, that was what I had hoped for. And that the only thing that we've had come from this is the state of Florida, their Medicaid system. They were having a problem with opiates, and they adopted this system. And now people with opiate issues, I believe that number was 38, 39% we were able to save there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it is being implemented. Uh, but I really thought that big corporate owners, mm -hmm. they're, they're business people. Right. 
why would I want to spend money on healthcare when I can spend money on my product? Yeah, I'm thinking you go to Apple and you're like, hey, guys, here's how we can treat your, your – and they would go, yeah, that sounds great. It clicks every box that an owner of a business would want. Have you tried to do that and sat down and said, all right, we can open a clinic – in this area, these are the guys I'm going to hire, you know, and like, we'll just take. I've them. had some discussions with a couple of uh, local owners and most of them uh, that I had in Michigan. In Michigan, I was on the school board for for eight, eight years. And oh, what yeah. I tried to do in our county was bring the eight school districts together to adopt this. And the school districts pointed at the unions, the union pointed at the school districts. And at the end of the day, they wanted a allopathically run facility to deliver this type of model. And right off the bat, I'm like, guys, that's exactly what you don't want. Right Now, do we need MD directors? Yes. Do we need MD or DOs uh, involved? Yes. This isn't an exclusion. This is an inclusion. Yeah. But it has to be run from a certain, a, a certain standpoint of dynamics yeah. that you don't have an allopathic medicine. Right. And again, folks, not that those people aren't needed. They're wonderful. They're lifesavers. Mm. But if you want to change it, it's got to be from a perspective of lifestyle change. That's not their training. Yeah. That's our training. Yeah. Well, we'll just pray that the Lord moves in this model and shifts people's hearts. and you know. When it's his time. That's right, for sure. So um, I, I just need to stand ready, right? Yeah. So you went. You started off talking about how the brain runs eleven different systems in our body. Yes. Um, talk to us a little bit more about that, and maybe give our listeners some tips on things they can do to help increase that energy that's going there. How do you, you know? And 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 then to know, hey, I, I may have like a an issue that you know just this shows up in I think in a lot of ways as pain. For us, yes. it's a receptor that's saying, "Hey, we're not working quite right," um, and maybe talk to us, talk to us a little bit about that, and then when they should come see you. Your body will try to manage all of its challenges: hypertension, sugar levels, pain. It will do everything it can it can to try to manage those things for you. Mm-hmm. When it comes to a point when it can't handle it anymore, it's going to give you a symptom, much like the warning light on your dash of your car. Mm-hmm. If you're taking medications that simply cover up the the warning light, the problem continues to persist. Sure. It continues to compound to the point where your only other option at some juncture will be surgery. Mm -hmm. Take an organ out, some, 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 some type of intervention. When you look at these 11 systems, I always reference the way that God made us. God made us with a hierarchy of importance in our body. This type of year, this time of year, I'm sorry, uh, at my office I do a seminar series called New Year's Resolution or Revolution. Mm. So in other words, a resolution by mid-February, I'm going to have my gym back to myself. (laughs) Yes. Because we've gone back to our old habits. Right. Right? We need a revolution. Yeah. And that revolution is lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So what I teach is, How long can you go without food? Now, Mitch and I could probably go six weeks. Mitch (laughs) is a big guy, right? But most people can go 30 days without food. Right. So that's on the bottom of the hierarchy, Mm -hmm. right? I'm sorry, there's one less. Exercise. How long can we go without exercise? And the answer is a lifetime. Because there's millions of us, Colin, that are active and busy. but We don't exercise. We're active. Right. We feel like, hey, we got it covered. And then we move up the pyramid. The next thing up is probably going to be water. You need water every three to five times, every three to five days. You need sleep every 48 hours, right? Um, You need oxygen every so many minutes. And on the top is your nervous system. Mm -hmm. If your brain's not communicating with your body, it's not even a fraction of a second. It's called paralysis. Right. You've lost total control. Yeah. Well, your brain controls every action in your body. Mm -hmm. Every single action your brain or brainstem controls. And it communicates with your body through your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So why is it that it's January and you want to have a resolution and you want to start with exercise 
and diet, mm. which you only need every 30 days. Yeah. Why don't you start with the things that have a greater impact? So you pull out your calendar, mm -hmm. number one. And this is how I became a chiropractor, folks. This isn't because I'm a chiropractor. I mark my days on when to get adjusted. And I don't base my adjustments on how I feel. I base them on how I function. Because if you look up the word health in Dorland's medical text, health is defined as functioning at or near 100% and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. What, how often do you feel like um, on the regular is a good adjustment schedule? It's kind of like, Colin, if you're going to get in shape. Mm -hmm. So the first couple months, depending on where you're at, you're going to have to be pretty intense, right? Sure. Four or five times a week okay. to the gym. Yeah, right? for sure. And that's not going to last forever because once you get your body where you need it to be, and usually for most of us, it's four to six months, mm -hmm. right? Um, for the people that are carrying over 60, 70 pounds, it may be nine months, mm -hmm. 12 months. But there's an, an intensive period. Right. Once you get past the intensive period, then it depends on what you've done with your body. Gotcha. Because your body is two things. Your body is your vehicle that God has given you to get through life. Mm -hmm. And then your body is also your history book from, from conception. Oh, yeah. So that's why when we do our labs and our diagnostics, what I'm doing is reading your book. Mm. So first you come up with a calendar, how many times I need to get adjusted. Mm -hmm. And I need to know that the first two to six months is going to be fairly intensive, folks. Three times a week. Wow, three times a week. Raising four kids, whenever my kids had an issue, I may adjust them five times in a day. Oh, wow. This weekend I was in Michigan celebrating my uh, middle daughter Bria's birthday, mm -hmm. and then I have identical twin grandsons that are five. Mm -hmm. First thing I do when I walk in the door, who's first? <laughs> because these are the people that I love sure. the most. You want to take care of them. And I want to take care of them. That's, that's the first priority for me. So you lay them down, you adjust them all, and then you, and then you start your day. So things like, first thing is get adjusted. Second thing is oxygen. So you've got to get away from cigarettes. You've got to get away from an environment that your oxygen is, is poor. Mm -hmm. uh, third thing is going to be water. So take half of your body weight in ounces mm -hmm. per day. So I weigh 250 pounds. I need to eat, drink 125 ounces a day of water. A gallon's 128. Yep, you're right there. That's getting right So if I'm someone that likes my coffee or tea that has caffeine, which is a diuretic, so that 125 is going to have to go higher because I took it flush it some out. Yes. <clears throat> Those are your steps. Yeah. And then the next step after that is your sleep. Mm -hmm. Set your alarm to go to bed. Set your alarm to get up. How often? How much sleep do you feel like people need? Because you hear eight hours. Yes, yes. I like Many to think, of us don't get that. Exactly, exactly. And all of us are different. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to do is to set a rhythm right? to where your body knows what time to get up, what time to go to bed. Yeah. And then one of the biggest things, in, in my mind, 80% of disease comes from the kitchen. Really? Okay. It's what you eat and what you drink. There's two systems in your body that must function at a high level. Mm -hmm. The first is your nervous system, and the second is your gut. Mm -hmm. Your gut health is directly correlated to what you eat and what you drink. They, they call your gut your second brain. So let's spend the time and own the kitchen. Yeah. And you notice we haven't talked about the gym? That's true, we haven't. So it's probably March 1st before I want you to go to the gym. Because from a level of importance, you haven't got there yet. Right. So let, let's talk about the food. Take a step at a time, one step at a time. The first step is breakfast. What do I need for breakfast? Eggs, vegetables, put on some, some oil, some vinegars, mm -hmm. some pink Himalayan sea salt, mm -hmm. some pepper. Olive oil, olive oil divine, friends of ours right here in town. Oh, yeah, they're great. Wonderful people. Please stop by there. You don't need dressings. You don't need any. You just stop in there. I think uh, I think they've got about 50 of each. Different flavors of olive oil that's yes. used and delicious. Yes, and it's good fats. Yeah. It's good fats. So if you were to think about each cell in your body, it's like the cup that you're holding. 
Every cell in your body has an outer cell wall. Shell, mm -hmm. cell, cell wall. It's a double lipid bilayer. What's a lipid? Fat. Fat. You must eat fat. Right. But it's got to be good fat. Sure. Real butter, real oil, those types of things. Unsaturated. Yes. Yes. So if you want to truly own this thing called health, which I encourage you because that's what's going to give you your life. Mm -hmm. 80% of it's in the kitchen. Own the kitchen, folks. Start with breakfast. And you're saying 80%. That means there's still 20% where you can eat some French fries. What I'm saying, <laughs> I'm just 80% of disease <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. comes yeah. from the kitchen. Right. And if you're eating 80% healthy, that's probably a... a oh, gosh, that is level. huge. That'd wouldn't be huge, it be? Wouldn't it? Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. You can do the 80-20. Mm -hmm. I recommend that once you've gone through your intensive. Yeah. And get your gut right. Yes. 80-20. Yep. Till that point, 90-10. Probiotics? Huge yeah. probiotics. Yogurts, kefir, kefir, that kind of stuff. Have to be careful with that because a lot of yogurts are real high in sugar. Sugar, yeah, for sure. So uh, we take a, a probiotic. I take 100 billion a day. And I know a lot of people, when you look at things, recommended dosage is 5, 10, 15. Um, if you take too much, you're just going to poop more. Right. Okay. Yeah. Flush it out. Uh, water. Um we also have a water company, this local in town, Dan Toth. He's got a water company that provides filtration. Is that Hague? Water? Hague Systems, yeah. yes. I've seen that. Great guy, wonderful, God-loving guy. Yeah, so you got to have clean water. Clean water. If you were to come into my office, I've had one of Dan's water systems uh, sitting on the wall. I think I spent around $2,500 for that system mm -hmm. because I, I spent so much time there. Right. Uh, he also has an air purifier. Mm -hmm. um, the one I have in my hallway uh, takes care of the entire suite, but I have a small one in the front and the back because I want clean air. Yeah. And, you know, in the last three years, I've told my patients, the air in my suite is cleaner than any air you'll get anywhere else, folks. Mm -hmm. Hospitals, outside, Top your home. A mountain. Still anywhere. I mean, anywhere. it is it is purified stuff. So we have to embrace what God gave us. Right. There's a hierarchy. Don't try to do things your way. Go by the the hierarchy that God has set forth in, in you. Yeah. If you do that, you're being true to to your Creator. You're being true to to you, mm -hmm. and the results will be there quickly. Yeah. So don't go to the gym until March first. There you go. You have to own the kitchen, which starts breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, in that order. You have to own one before you go to the second. Okay. You, can't, you can't just do it all at once. Right. Okay. Those are some great tips. Thanks, Tim. Um, which we're probably, I'm sure if you're listening like I am, uh, contradictory to what you think. Well, you got to go in the gym, get pumped up, and get in shape, and then... You can with that we're going to do the other things that are healthy too. That's exactly. But you're right. right. It's hard to start, you can't start more than one. It's very difficult to start more than one habit at a time. Very few people are that OCD to do that. Right. And be, it takes some be severe be discipline. Yeah. And I was talking to my son this morning about it. It's 21 days of in a row without breaking is the start of a habit, and then if you do three cycles of that, it becomes almost harder to stop than to start. You know, to keep going because your rhythms. Your rhythms. Have now changed. Yep, and you've changed your body. My wife, Dr. Cindy, has always stated, you cannot exercise away a bad diet. That's true. In other words, you're, you're pumping garbage in, and you're trying to burn the garbage. Right. Okay, your arteries, your veins, everything else is going to be clogged up. Right. So let's not, let's not try to do things out of order. Yeah. So one of your questions earlier was, when do you come into a facility like ours? When you've consciously made the decision that health is a priority, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with symptoms. My treatment patterns, my treatment recommendations have nothing to do with symptoms. It's your health and how you function. Yeah. Cool. Well, what do you see as the, um, like, the, what's your dream for um, advocate integrated medicine? Do you see? Growing here locally, you see multiple sites. What's your what's what's the Lord calling you to do with this? I don't know yet. We've got a lot of changes coming up in the next couple of years, uh, not only with this country but with healthcare. Mm -hmm. I foresee a lot of major shifts mm -hmm. that are going to be occurring. Um, I keep being drawn back to universities. Mm -hmm. um, 
I like working with young people. I like working with people that are not fixed on things that they think are true, mm -hmm. which is my biggest obstacle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, patients walking in the door, uh, we do a, a, what we call a three-day workup. Mm -hmm. So the first day is doing some diagnostics. The second day is a functional exam mm -hmm. because function is health. Mm -hmm. And then the third day we sit down and we lay out, okay, this is where you're at. This is your baseline. This is what we expect. This is how often we're going to measure and how. And the amount of patients that say, well, I'm going to go home and think about it. So I hope that we get to the point where our system incentivizes health. Mm -hmm. So when you look at incentivizing, we found that there's two ways to incentivize people, and that's money and time off. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did in our system. If you have 12 or 16 markers that we constantly keep in track of, mm -hmm. and at different levels, you get more incentive to the point where you can get five days off extra a year and get a nice bonus of a few thousand dollars. So we're basically giving you money to take a vacation. Right. That is All where because you're taking care of yourself. Because you're taking and care you're of yourself. And you're going to feel a whole lot better. More productive, more time off, less injuries, better father, better husband. Mm -hmm. where's, where's the drawback? Right. There's not. The drawback is that we have too many systems in place that are businesses and they're not for the people. Yeah. That's the challenge. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten, you know, the, the veil has been pulled off in the last two years, three years on a lot of different topics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do our uh, listeners connect with you? Our website is aim, A-I-M, tricities.com. Mm -hmm. One word. Our office number is 423-388-3643. Uh, when you call, this wonderful young lady named Sherry will a answer the phone. Um, she will go to the ends of the earth to get you what you need and oh, to help you out. And that's sweet. And yeah. that's what we love. Yeah. Our office is a team approach. You get everybody when you come in. Exercise techs, medical doctor and Dr. Riggins, uh, the nurse practitioner, D, myself, my wife. It's kind of like an all hands on deck. Gotcha. Insurance, let's talk about that because I'm sure a lot of listeners are like, how do I pay for all this? This sounds awesome, but I got to pay for it. In, most insurances are a accepted. Okay. Um, I can't think of any that we're not. If, if we're not, it's because they won't let us in. Gotcha. And that's another way of manipulating the system. The system, yeah. Gotcha. We're only going to let so many of this and so many of that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Ugh. Um, well, anything else I, you'd like to share that I didn't ask on our podcast? Yes, and, and, that, and that would be your health is your priority. Mm. Without your health, your ability to be a husband, um, to be able to be employed, to be able to take care of your family diminishes. Mm -hmm. Make it your priority. If you're a man like you and I, make, it, make yourself the example of your family. Yeah. Your family, if the father goes to Christ, 86% of the family follows. Mm -hmm. And it drops dramatically if the mother goes to Christ first. Yeah. So be, be the leader in the family, step up, make it your priority, mm -hmm. make it your family's priority, and then know that the benefits are right behind. Yeah. The priority's got to be health because without health, we can't grow big businesses. We can't, you know, look at Steve Jobs. You know, the man had more billions than he could ever spend, and yet his health failed him. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, I know my listeners have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I'm excited. Wonderful. Hopefully my, uh, some some of them will come and see you. Um, and um, yeah, um, until, yeah. So I'm excited to just have hear more stories from you. And I'm going to follow up with it's you in a little a while great, and just watch. Great experience. See how it goes. So yeah, thank you so much. It's been great. Um, and, and until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to meet Tim, you want to come to move to Johnson City, I'd love to help you do that. We also manage a ton of property. We'd love to help you um, learn how you can build wealth through real estate. Um, 
and investing in it as well. So, um, yeah, just give me a call if I can do anything to help you either way. Like Tim, we're just here to help and we want to love you um, because Jesus does too. Have a great day. Thanks.